All right, good morning, everyone. It is so good to be with you today. It's September 24th, and we have a little less than 100 days uh, to the end of the year. Actually, I think today is like uh, 98 days until the end of the year. So we are fast, you know, moving through the end of the year. Qu the end of the year is quickly approaching, and we are now beginning to read through the New Testament. And so we've spent the entire year reading through the Old Testament together, and it's been incredible. And we've watched as as uh, God instituted a plan to bring the Messiah into place. And so now we're going to start reading about Jesus, and we're going to be reading about his ministry, and we're going to eventually be uh, learn about his, his death and his resurrection, and then his empowering the church with the Holy Spirit to, uh, to go and to make other disciples. And uh, so... Uh, it's incredible. I'm really, really excited about what we are uh, about to embark on together. I do want to encourage you, invite other people into the journey. Uh, you know, maybe like it, uh, you know, post it on your Facebook. Hey, join me um, and my online pastor as, uh, as we read through the New Testament together through the end of the year. All right, so let's jump in. We are we're doing this chronologically, so if it jumps around a little bit throughout the the uh, um, you know the next few months, don't be surprised by that. But we begin today in the book of Mark. Okay, it says this is the good news about Jesus, the Messiah, the Son of God. Oh, one other uh, quick note. So I'm reading out of the chronological Bible. It's a one year chronological Bible, and it is the the NLT, the New Living Translation. You can find these online uh, or, um, you know, at a, a Christian bookstore, but that's what you're going to be looking for, okay? The New Living Translation. Uh, you can also, you can actually go right on the uh, YouVersion app and you can um, find the Chronological Bible on there as well. If you go to the Bibles and you can select and find the chronological Bible that we're working through today. All right, so September 24th, this is the good news about Jesus, the Messiah, the Son of God. Luke chapter 1, we're giving that introduction as well. Many people have set out to write accounts about the events that have been fulfilled among us. They used the eyewitness reports circulating among us from the early disciples. Having, having carefully investigated everything from the beginning, I also have decided to write a careful account for you, most honorable Theophilus, so you can be certain of the truth of everything that you were taught. All right, let's go to John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, the, excuse me, in the beginning the Word already existed, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He existed in the beginning with God. God created everything through him, and nothing was created except through him. The word gave life to everything that was created, and his life brought light to everyone. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never extinguish it. God sent a man, John the Baptist, to tell about the light so that everyone might believe because of his testimony. John himself was not the light. He was simply a witness to tell about the light, the one who is the true light, who gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He came into the very world he created, but the world didn't recognize him. He came to his own people, and even they rejected him. But to all who believed him and accepted him, he gave the right to become children of God. They are reborn, not with a physical birth resulting from human passion or plan, but a birth that comes from God. So the word became human and made his home among us. He was full of unfailing love and, un and faithfulness, and we have seen his glory, the glory of the Father's one and only Son. John testified about him when he shouted to the crowds, This is the one I was talking about when I said, Someone is coming after me who is far greater than I am, for he existed long before me. From his abundance we have all received one gracious blessing after another. For the law was given through Moses, but God's unfailing love and faithfulness came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, but the unique one who, is, who him, is himself, God, is near to the Father's heart. He has revealed God to us. Now we're jumping to Matthew chapter 1, to those opening statements. So just pause here for a moment. Matthew, Mark, 
Luke, and John are known as the four Gospels. And they are the, the, the eyewitness accounts of the life, the ministry, the death, the resurrection of Jesus. And, and, um, and so we're seeing in this chronological Bible, we're given the, the, the preliminary, the, the prelude statements as each of the Gospels, you know, begins. So uh, Matthew chapter 1 this is a record of the ancestors of Jesus, the Messiah, a descendant of David, and of Abraham. Abraham was the father of Isaac. Isaac was the father of Jacob. Jacob was the father of Judah and his brothers. Judah was the father of Perez and Zerah, whose mother was Tamar. Perez was the father of Hezron. Hezron was the father of Ram. Ram was the father of Amminadab. Amminadab was the father of Nashon. Nashon was the father of Salmon. Salmon was the father of Boaz, whose mother was Rahab. Boaz was the father of Obed, whose mother was Ruth. Obed was the father of Jesse. Jesse was the father of King David. David was the father of Solomon, whose mother was Bathsheba, the widow of Uriah. Solomon was the father of Rehoboam. Rehoboam was the father of Abijah. Abijah was the father of Asa. Asa was the father of Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat was the father of Jehoram. Jehoram was the father of Uzziah. Uzziah was the father of Jotham. Jotham was the father of Ahaz. Ahaz was the father of Hezekiah. Hezekiah was the father of Manasseh. Manasseh was the father of Ammon. And Ammon was the father of Josiah. And Josiah was the father of Jehoiachin and his brothers born at the time of the exile to Babylon. After the Babylonian exile, Jehoiachin was the father of Sheltiel. Sheltiel was the father of Zerubbabel. Zerubbabel was the father of Abiud. Abiud was the father of Eliakim. Eliakim was the father of Azor. Azor was the father of Zadok. Zadok was the father of Achim. Achim was the father of Eliad. Eliad was the father of Eleazar. And Eleazar was the father of Matin. And Matin was the father of Jacob. And Jacob was the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary. And Mary gave birth to Jesus, who is called the Messiah. Now, it's really important that we see and understand this, that, uh, that, that the prophecies in the Old Testament spoke of the reality that the Messiah would come from the line of David, King David. Okay? And, uh, and so Matthew sets out to show the genealogical record for the Israelite people so that they have confidence in understanding that Jesus was truly, he was in the line of David. And so when there's prophetic, uh, you know, uh, messages that says that there will be one who sits on the throne forever for the, from the line of David, Jesus fulfills that prophecy. Okay, let's continue on. All those listed above include 14 generations from Abraham to David, 14 from David to the Babylonian exile, and 14 from the Babylonian exile to the Messiah. Now Luke chapter 3, verse 23, we'll jump over there. Jesus was known as the son of Joseph. Joseph was the son of Heli. Heli was the son of Methat. Mat uh, Mathet was the son of Levi. Levi was the son of Melchi. Melchi was the son of Janai. Janai was the son of Joseph. Joseph was the son of Mattathias. Mattathias was the son of Amos. Amos was the son of Nahum. Nahum was the son of Esli. Esli was the son of Nagai. Nagai was the son of Math. Math was the son of Matthias. Matthias was the son of Seman. Uh, Simeon was the son of Josek. Josek was the son of Joda. Joda was the son of Jonan. Jonan was the son of Risa. Risa was the son of Zerubbabel. Zerubbabel was the son of Sheltiel. Sheltiel was the son of Neri. Neri was the son of Melchi. Melchi was the son of Adi. Adi was the son of Cossum. Cossum was the son of Elmadam. Elmadam was the son of Ur. Ur was the son of Joshua. Joshua was the son of Eliezer. Eliezer was the son of Joram. Joram was the son of Mathet. Mathet was the son of Levi. Levi was the son of Simeon. Simeon was the son of Judah. Judah was the son of Joseph. Joseph was the son of Jonan. Jonan was the son of Eliakim. 
Eliakim was the son of Melia. Melia was the son of Mena. Mena was the son of Metatha. Metatha was the son of Nathan. Nathan was the son of David. David was the son of Jesse. Jesse was the son of Obed. Obed was the son of Boaz. Boaz was the son of Salmon. Salmon was the son of Nation. Nation was the son of Aminadab. Aminadab was the son of Ad Admin. Admin was the son of Arni. Arni was the son of Hezron. Hezron was the son of Perez. Perez was the son of Judah. Judah was the son of Jacob. Jacob was the son of Isaac. Isaac was the son of Abraham. Abraham was the son of Terah. Terah was the son of Nahor. Nahor was the son of Sirab. Sirab was the son of Reu. Ru was the son of Peleg. Peleg was the son of Eber. Eber was the son of Shelah. Shelah was the son of Canaan. Canaan was the son of Arphazak. Arphazak was the son of Shem. And Shem was the son of Noah. Noah was the son of Lamech. Lamech was the son of Methuselah. Methuselah was the son of Enoch. Enoch was the son of Jared. Jared was the son of Mahalel. Mahalel was the son of Kenan. Kenan was the son of Enosh. Enosh was the son of Seth. Seth was the son of Adam, and Adam was the son of God. How amazing is that, right? So, so, um, so Matthew, I mean, excuse me, Luke, Luke takes um, all the way back um, to to God's creating Adam, and Adam and Eve. They have three sons, right? Um, Cain, Abel, and then Seth, and then Seth we we uh, we find all the way up to Noah. And then Shem, Ham, and, and Japheth, and the, from Shem we see all of you know uh, all the way up to uh, Jesus. Pretty incredible. Uh, they do a, me a meticulous job in making sure that that um, the ancestral line is traced. And so again, great confidence that we find in the Word of God that the, there is uh, meticulous detail given to the ancestral tree of Jesus the Messiah okay uh, now we're jumping to Luke chapter 1 verse 5 all right the birth of John the Baptist foretold when Herod was king of Judea there was a Jewish priest named Zechariah he was a member of the priestly order of Abijah and his wife Elizabeth was also from the priestly line of Aaron Zechariah and Elizabeth were righteous in God's eyes careful to obey all of the Lord's commandments and regulations. They had no children because Elizabeth was unable to conceive and they were both very old. And one day Zechariah was serving God in the temple for his order was on duty that week. As was the custom of the priests, he was chosen by lot to enter the sanctuary of the Lord and burn incense. While the incense was being burned, a great crowd stood outside praying. While Zechariah was in the sanctuary, an angel of the Lord appeared to him standing to the right of the incense altar. Zechariah was shaken and overwhelmed with fear when he saw him. But the angel said, Don't be afraid, Zechariah. God has heard your prayer. Your wife, Elizabeth, will give you a son, and you are to name him John. You will have great joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth. For he will be great in the eyes of the Lord. He must never touch wine or other alcoholic drinks. He will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before his birth. And he will turn many Israelites to the Lord their God. He will be a man with the spirit and power of Elijah. He will prepare the people for the coming of the Lord. He will turn the hearts of the fathers to their children. And he will cause those who are rebellious to accept the wisdom of the godly. And Zechariah said to the angel, How can I be sure this will happen? I am an old man now, and my wife is also well along in years. And then the angel said, I am Gabriel. I stand in the very presence of God. It was he who sent me to bring you this good news. But now, since you didn't believe what I said, you will be silent and unable to speak until the child is born. For my words will certainly be fulfilled at the proper time. And meanwhile, the people were waiting for Zechariah to come out of the sanctuary, wondering why he was taking so long. And when he finally did come out, he couldn't speak to them. Then they realized from his gestures and his silence that he must have seen a vision in the sanctuary. When Zechariah's week of service in the temple was over, he returned home. Soon afterward, his wife, Elizabeth, became pregnant and went into seclusion for five months. How kind the Lord is, she exclaimed. 
He has taken away my disgrace of having no children. Verse 26. And in the sixth month of Elizabeth, Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a village in Galilee, to a virgin named Mary. She was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of King David. Gabriel appeared to her and said, Greetings, favored woman. The Lord is with you. Confused and disturbed, Mary tried to think what the angel could mean. Don't be afraid, Mary, the angel told her, for you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be very great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his, his ancestor David, and he will reign over Israel forever. His kingdom will never end. Mary asked the angel, but how can this happen? I am a virgin. And the angel replied, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the baby to be born will be holy, and he will be called the Son of God. What's more, your relative Elizabeth has become pregnant in her old age. People used to say she was barren, but she has conceived a son and is now in her sixth month. For nothing is impossible with God. And Mary responded, I am the Lord's servant. May everything you have said about me come true. And then the angel left her. All right. Pretty amazing. I love this response. And so I just want to encourage you. Make sure you uh, you use a pen as you're, you're reading. And uh, just whatever sticks out to you, uh, make sure that you underline it. And so I'm going to underline there just Mary's response. Because I think that this is really important. Because Mary... She doesn't know how it's going to happen after Gabriel tells her, hey, you're going to conceive. And she says, oh, wait a minute, I'm a virgin. How in the world is this even possible? And then Gabriel explains, well, the, the Holy Spirit is going to, to come upon you and is going to you know, basically place the, you know, the, um, you know, the, the seed of God inside of you that, that now what is born will be a, a holy man, a holy one. Uh, and, um, and listen to what she says. She says, I am the Lord's servant. May everything you have said about me come true. <laughs> so she was willing. She was a willing participant at that point in saying, wow, God's got an incredible plan. It includes me. And this is going to really bring a bit of confusion. Um, to my husband that I'm engaged to, okay, at that time, they would still be considered husband, wife in that, in the state of being betrothed. And, and so, you know, I'm, she had not been married yet. They did not consummate any, any wedding at that point. She was a virgin. And so she, a virgin gave birth, which was, was, by the way, prophesied about back in, in Isaiah, spoke of, the the virgin would be with child and and i mean whoever would consider or think about this reality of like no that's a miracle it's it's literally impossible for a virgin to give birth to a child unless this is something that god has done and god has willed for this to happen and so she says all right i'm your servant may everything happen just as you said and I think that's a challenge for all of us. Like, okay, God, what's your plan? What's your plan? What's your plan in this world? What's your plan for me, Lord? Because um, you know, may may everything be be done as as you've said. Everything be done as you desire, Lord. I'm willing to go along for the ride and whatever it is that you have for me. What a great challenge for us to say, okay, God, what do you have for me? And you know, just to keep our hearts, you know, right with God and ready for whatever God has. Are you ready for what God has for the next few months? Um, I just want to encourage you to be like Mary who says, okay, God, I'm ready. I'm in. Whatever it is that you have for me, I'm going to follow and uh, I, I'm, I'm ready for it. All right, let's pray together. Lord, just help us to be ready. God, I thank you for each one that is reading with me through the New Testament and uh, Lord, we just pray that as we as we just wind the clock down for this year, Lord, help us as we hide your word in our hearts, 
God, help us to grow, help us to learn more about you, and help us, Lord, to be like Mary, who says, Lord, we are ready. God, we know that uh, we have been born for such a time as this. So we're ready, Lord, for whatever it is that you have for us. What your will is, God, may it be done. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, thanks for joining me. And again, I want to encourage you, uh, make sure that you you like this. Um, you know, if you're using the church app, send send a, an invite out to, to other people to join the app. If you're using YouTube, uh, make sure that you like and you subscribe and you invite others to join the YouTube channel so that they can join us as we're reading through. And I'm going to offer a little bit of commentary each day as we read God's Word together. And um, yeah, we're going to get to the end of the year and look back and be really glad that we uh, spent time together reading the Word of God. So God bless you. I hope you have a great day and we'll see you tomorrow as we continue in our reading.